hey, it's done. Um, let's just go right into this. There's a ton of stuff going on right now, a ton of new things, a ton of things that are going to be uh, issues of concern for a lot of people going forward. Um, we've got Amazon news. We've got eBay news. We've got news on car sales. We've got news on clothing. Many different markets are affected right now with what's going on. Now, let me address just the question first here. Um, I did a video on the, the uh, crash of the clothing market. Shoes are considered clothing. Shoes are purchased in the same way that most clothing is. Months, years, year and a half, two years in advance in some cases. Sometimes before a product is even made, they are already selling it to uh, you know the stores, department stores, websites, and things like that. And the company is already preparing to market it well in advance of even its release. So... Whatever happens to the clothing industry, shoes are tied with it. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to still be able to make some money at it, but if you even look on eBay right this very second, on the main splash page of eBay, there's a big thing, name brand uh, clothing resellers offering discounts up to 70% off. Now, that's on the main page. I just saw it before I hit live on this just to kind of see where things are going. There's sales everywhere. They're, they're trying to get rid of clothing so it's not backing up for months worth of clothing and killing a whole season. Again, clothing is a seasonal aspect of it now along with clothing we've got a crash coming for the automotive industry used cars specifically because again you've got new cars that have backed up in in lots and things so there's going to be a flood of new cars that are already finished sitting around even if they start back up there may be so many new cars sitting out there that you'll see a lot of sales going on now, a lot of people may not be sinking money into a car either at this point a lot of people are out of a job they could lose the car that they have now so it's going to be the same basic principle. Parts may see a little bit of an incline in sales possibly, but it's iffy because so many people aren't driving very much at all. I mean, huge. The oil prices have just plummeted across the, the world, and they've I think they're going to be cutting down 10 million barrels of production of oil a day um, with OPEC, if I read that correctly. I could be wrong on that figure, but I know it's some massive amount. So that tells you how few people are driving. Even the pollution rate for the whole globe has went down globally. Globally. So, you know, all these industries are going to have similar issues, even when everything comes back online. Now, before I go into Amazon and then into eBay, I wanted to state clearly that I make the vast majority, almost all of my money comes from reselling. I am not a marketer. Um, you know, I have the little links on here and stuff like that. I don't push them. I don't even push my own Patreon paid service page personally. I don't come out and do huge videos and announce it and everything else. I'm not a big marketer at all. I am literally a reseller, and that's where most of our money comes from. So everything I'm going to talk about from this point is something that personally can affect my business, so I take this 100% serious. The, the vast majority, as I said, of my income comes from selling on these platforms. As you know, we're on Walmart, Amazon, eBay, many other platforms. We, we make revenue on 10 different sites right now. So I take this all seriously. I dig into everything because, again, when something changes in uh, stuff on a different platform, on Amazon or eBay, I may have to address and change up my business to match so I'm not either losing or I can capitalize on the change that's taking place. So I dug into all of this. For those of you who do affiliate links, Amazon just did a major change where they're cutting back on what they paid you for those affiliate links, in some cases by 85%. I think most of them, the smallest chunk they're taking away is 60% of the revenue they used to pay out for that, starting at the end of this month. So that means those folks who rely on like blog posts and affiliate links to make their living by like reviewing items and then having links to those items, they're going to be hurt dramatically right now in a time when Amazon is having record sales. So many sales going through Amazon right now that they've had to stop taking in product, switch around everything to keep pushing out items. So this is very, very troublesome for them to be doing it to us, us folks who do affiliate links, when uh, obviously people need the money now more than ever. Now, I don't make hardly anything on affiliate links, in all honesty. I mean, it's pennies. It's, it's a joke. I have them in there because, again, it's items that I actually use. My affiliate links are only links to stuff that I use. Now, I also am part of the eBay affiliate links. We're going to know very shortly what eBay thinks about its resellers and the people marketing and advertising their products for them very soon. If eBay follows suits with Amazon and cuts those percentages they pay out, that's going to show who they're really concerned about in my book. 
Again, that's going to be the first sign that they're not so much concerned about that, but the shareholders in the company, like any other company, seems to be concerned about. So that's going to be the first warning shot coming our way if they cut the affiliate percentages just like Amazon did. And Amazon's not playing around. They just drastically sh uh, cut them down. So basically, like on groceries, I think it used to be 6%. So if you sold a dollar item, you got six cents on that dollar. Now it's going to be a penny. One cent you will get if you... Uh, somebody buys something from one of your links. And again, I don't push that I even have the links. I, I'd be hard-pressed for anybody to even find a comment me saying there's links in the description. I very rarely even call it out. Maybe a uh, handful of times, if, if at that. So again, I just put them down there. It's a service to some people. Some people ask what I sell. I'll even tell you as well that you can look at the stuff that I buy and then source them cheaper somewhere else if that's your case. So, you know... It's probably going to make people switch from Amazon affiliate links maybe to eBay. So maybe it's going to be a good thing for eBay. But if eBay cuts them as well, end of story. This would have been a chance for eBay to step in and push. Now, if eBay was smart and wanted to rake out on this, they wouldn't decrease the rates that they were paying. They would increase them. That would pull away all of these influencers, everybody who's posting products and links to products on Amazon, to use eBay instead. Now, this is a perfect opportunity. We'll see where their brains are if they don't do that. If they cut them as well, they're not thinking about the big picture. People in corporate America pretty much only seem to think about what's going on right now and not the longevity. They think about stockholders and giving them a big return on their investment. Now, let's touch on the last aspect here, which is eBay's new CEO. Now, you got to think before we go any farther of talking about who's going to be running eBay, we got to look at what happened before. Why did the last CEO leave? Why did he step down and leave the company? Well, if you paid attention, it was because of activist investors telling them to sell something, and he disagreed with them. They forced him out. So who runs the company? The board of directors. Keep that in mind, because the stockholders are all that seems to matter. I'm going to read you some quotes and things like that in just a few minutes here from eBay, from their um, board of directors and things like that as well, too. So what matters is the, the shareholders. Because, again, they didn't listen to the CEO. And I don't know. I can't say he was doing good or doing bad. All I can say is selling off assets that are making a company money when the main business the company is doing isn't doing very well is just ludicrous. So this new guy is coming in. I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. You can look it up if you wish. It doesn't really matter. My opinion is the board of directors is calling all the shots at this point. We've got these activist investors have come in and bought like 4%, two different companies. Um, let me think. Where's the one of the companies is Starboard Value. The other one is Elliott Management, as well as there are some activist investors that are on eBay's board. They put the new CEO on eBay's board. The only way this guy got hired is if he is going along and past the inspection and the grilling of questions from these board members. These board members want to sell off classifieds, eBay classifieds as well, just like they just got their way with StubHub. So you can't sell off all of the things that make a company big and make the company money and then not invest that back into the company to make sure that the main business that the company does increases. All you got to do is look at Toys R Us. The same basic thing came in. Activist investors came in. They sold a lot of Toys R Us's revenue streams off. And then at the end of the day, they couldn't fix Toys R Us because they all lined their pocket. Now, the new CEO of eBay is probably going to make close to $20 million a year. And I judge that on the fact that in 2018, the old CEO made close to $19 million. So, you know, he's going to make a ton of money either way. Now, I dig into stuff like this because I want to know what track record this person has. And again, we're going to my opinion here as a person who's probably hired a 1,000 people to work for companies that I was in charge of. I was a regional manager and a general manager. I hired everybody, assistant managers. I've even hired general managers to run stores for me. So I had to be a good judging character. I had to look at the evidence, their history. I personally would not hire the new CEO as a manager if I had to look at his experience, regardless of what he's ran, how long he's been there. 
I look at track record and how much revenue you've brought to the bottom line. Now, the new CEO used to work at Walmart.com, the e-commerce platform. Not Walmart itself, but Walmart.com, the platform. Now, how much did that platform make last year? They lost $2 billion. This is where he's taken over. Now, he's only been in there for a few months, but Morgan Stanley, a very reputable um, firm in, in Wall Street, predicted them to lose even more this year under his command, under his tutelage. So that scares me. So already he's taken from a place that's making no money, given a position at eBay. Now, I don't blame him at all because for me, if I'm working for a company that's already tanked $2 billion and projected to lose even more this year, trying to take on Amazon, that's literally what they're trying to do, take on Amazon, he's got a, a bad projection for how his new job as a Walmart exec with the Walmart e-commerce platform is going to be. A large chunk of Walmart's merchandise comes from China. They can't get it right now. So prognosis for his old position looks bad. So he's offered a position making way more than he was running a company as well. The whole thing, not just a subsidiary online.com, but the entire company basically here, the U.S. version of it. And he's given a ton of money as opposed to possibly failing for a year or two and being pushed out. So either way you go, his best opportunity was to take eBay. Even if it doesn't go anywhere, he's still going to come out ahead. As anybody knows, those who don't succeed running a business still get a big massive bonus when they leave. They still get stock options and everything else, just like nothing happened. Now, if it was one of us, we'd be fired. No extra money, no nothing. We'd lose, you know, vacation pay and everything else possibly. So, you know, there's two different structures. There's the corporate world and then there's the real world that the rest of us live in. So I'm just looking at that. Now, before that, he was running samsclub.com. Dot com, not Sam's Club itself, again, just the platform as well as memberships. Now, he did increase overall sales from the dot com part and he increased membership. But the weirdest part about that, again, Sam's Club is part of the Walmart company. There's no anywhere release that they made any profit whatsoever. Whatsoever. Again, Walmart.com, which probably sells more expensive items than Sam's Club.com, lost $2 billion. So my take on it is if the company was making money off of samsclub.com while he ran it for multiple years, they would be announcing that they made a profit. No company who's making a profit is going to hide that information. So again, chances are they're losing money just like walmart.com did. So track record now, he was running a, a business branch that lost $2 billion the year before. He's running another branch that's just not making money. Getting new members is great, super awesome, but what's the cost of acquisition for those new members? Getting new members doesn't mean you made more money, not at all. Look at eBay, for example. They have way more people as registered users on the platform, but yet the amount of merchandise that they actually sold on the platform was down, I think, 6.2% year over last, which is a huge amount. Every company looks for a 3% increase year over last. That is a standard corporate America figure. I worked in corporate America for 20 years, and that's a standard that you look for. A huge 6% decline in merchandise sold is bad. Now, eBay still made a profit last year because of fees, fees that they charge us. Where did the profit go? It didn't go to us. It didn't go into investments, into the company. It went to raise the price of the stocks so that the stockholders, the corporate America people, would get a bigger return on their investment. Now, with them selling StubHub for over $4 billion, they should have invested that money into the company to improve it. What did they do? They invested it into lining their pockets by doing buybacks. The same thing they did when the big, huge, supposed tax cuts that they did that were supposed to help us went all to corporate America. I can't say anybody who's actually benefited from the big tax cut that the current administration has done other than people who are already well off. Again, most companies just did buybacks when they did that. They're not doing anything to cover. They didn't sink that money into the bank to cover things like this happening. For like eBay selling StubHub, that is a fallback point. StubHub is the only thing that was making hand over fist money throughout the entire time. They, they bought it for over $300 million. It's worth over $4 billion. Why would you get rid of something making money? 
Like for an example, let's look at PayPal. eBay used to own PayPal. Now they have to go somewhere else and hire somebody else to handle managed payments. When eBay split off from PayPal, all that money's gone, mind you. PayPal went up 170% in stock value. eBay only went up 28% from all that time. They're, they're stagnant. Ever since they got rid of something of value, Again, back to Toys R Us. What happened when Toys R Us split off parts of their business that made them money? They were left hollow, just a shell, with no way to support or cover when bad things happen, such as what's going on. So again, I am not reassured at all by where their stream is going. Another article here on the CEO, where he worked at Walmart, he was responsible for store number eight, a Walmart incubation hub, where they tested all these new things they were going to try out online and across the board. So eBay is looking at what Walmart is doing and hiring somebody based on wanting knowledge into Walmart. This guy was just promoted and already bailed on, on Walmart. I don't hire people personally if they've got multiple jobs left and right and are bailing when stuff goes bad it makes me wonder about their their abilities to cover again wall street has totally different rules if you don't know twitter for years and years and years and years made nothing even though they had millions of subscribers so subscriber count means nothing as a company like me, I can report a loss for the first five years of, of business. Not making a diamond, I can legally keep on going. Again, profits aren't as a key factor in speculations in Wall Street. They go off on potential and things like that. So, you know, it doesn't matter that they're not making money. They're looking at the numbers of subscribers as a, as a key factor. And as we see with eBay, they got more people on the platform, but yet they're selling over 6% less overall for the entire year. That model is not sustainable when you take out stuff that's supporting the business, such as StubHub. And now they're going to sell eBay Classifieds, which was directly gaining ground against Craigslist and some of these other platforms. It makes no sense unless you're trying to bare bones it to make as much profit as you can so you can pull a Toys R Us situation. Again, this isn't need to panic because my hopes are that this guy at least sees that. People keep saying, well, he worked for eBay for eight years and on and on and on. Yeah, that was 11 years ago. The whole environment was totally different. Amazon was not that much of a threat at all to eBay back then. The whole markets, everything has totally changed since he worked there. Now, people again said he's vice president back then. There's VPs in every company. Where I worked, there was over 30 vice presidents. Each little area had a vice president. That is just a title. You can call a sanitation, a garbage uh, man, a person who picks up your garbage, a sanitation engineer, or he could be uh, supervising of sanitation engineering and just be a garbage man. A title means nothing to me. The position, responsibility, how much it improved the company is what matters. That's what I look at. Now, if I go back farther in his career, it gets worse, which is it's just the sad part. He worked for Barnes & Noble. Again, I, I'm just looking at history to judge whether this guy is going to be good or bad. This is what I do if I'm going to hire somebody. If I want an assistant manager, I want to know that the other places he worked for, he increased their business and kept it going and did stuff positive. Numbers mean nothing if they don't come back to the bottom line and increase. So if you got 21 million subscribers, but it cost you $40 million to get those and you made no money off of it, the subscriber count is almost useless unless you can figure out how to get money from it. You know, Amazon's doing great across the board. Walmart was mostly a grocery low-end seller, and they've even tried to get into higher-end stuff, and they just can't break the mark. Walmart is going straight after Amazon in competition. They're going after third-party vendors. You know, so every time I look at something with what this new guy coming in has done, Sam's Club, third-party vendor. Walmart, third-party vendor. Barnes & Noble, he tried to get third-party vendors to bring in Nook, and that's part of why Nook crashed. The new CEO is part of the reason why Nook just totally bombed and Barnes & Noble went under basically for quite some time. Now, let me read you um, a little thing here on this. This is from a report from 2014 when he left Barnes & Noble. Now, I'm not going to say his name. I'm not really sure um, how to pronounce it. But he was one of the senior managers who crafted the policy which simultaneously turned Barnes & Noble Android tablets into a walled garden. Again, we're talking about the Nook here while also neglecting to fill the garden with music, video, and enough apps. Along with Bill Lynch, and then again, this new CEO, was also one of the two people who signed off on the idea of selling Note Color for $250 and the Note Tablet for $350 when it launched in late 2011. 
Now the Kindle version of this, the best Kindle version only sold for $199. That tanked the Nook right there. And as the article says, while you cannot blame all of Nook's failures on him, it does make the list of the top five people who should have been fired a year ago after the disastrous 2012 holiday season over the Nooks. They totally sunk Barnes & Noble. They were bringing in third party, the poor decisions. They had no um, stuff to go on the platforms when they were releasing it. It tanked them. You know, he should have been fired. I've read this from I don't know how many places, the same basic thing over and over again about him. So... Bottom line is, though, he bailed on the company. He quit when all of this bad stuff was going, part of which he started. The only way eBay can use a third party is if they bring in a whole bunch of other merchants and sellers' businesses. And what happened on Amazon when they did that? What happens? What happens on Walmart with third-party businesses and apps? Vero's basically is what eBay calls them, meaning that if they bring in all of these third-party sellers and invite them into the fold, that means that they're going to be Vero-ing items. So only those stores, those companies, those brick-and-mortar businesses will be the ones to sell them. So let's say you get a pair of Nike shoes on the street that you can make $200 on. Are you going to still be able to sell those on the platform? I don't know. But that, that really has me worried because, again, if they're going towards this market, the new CEO is talking about innovative uh, actions that he did at the other companies he worked for. It's third-party apps. Now, eBay personally, execs at eBay personally told me in a conference call a while back last year that they're not wanting to be Amazon. But everything they do tells me they do. Every single thing they're doing, even by who they are hiring to do this. A guy from Amazon's uh, competitor who's literally trying to mimic their whole structure right now is who's going to be running the company. He has no modern-day relevance uh, work experience in how eBay is run right now. I know people come back and say, well, eBay was great back in 2011. They were doing very good, but they had no competition. It, it's You can't compare the two. It doesn't mean anything anymore running as a sole business with no real big competition. Nowadays, eBay is getting crushed by competition. They're losing market share left and right. The only way that they can really beef this up is to invest money into the business, not into buying stockbacks. If it was my company, and if I wanted to improve, really seriously, honestly wanted to improve the company, I would invest in that $4.5 billion into the business itself, whether it be advertising or what. They have the opportunity with affiliate links to crush Amazon for once. This is their one shot to at least get a ton more advertisement for them with doing nothing more than selling more items. Raise the affiliate link fee on eBay, and all these folks are going to drop Amazon like a rock and market and push eBay. It's a no-brainer. If they don't do that, they're totally not thinking about the future of the company. They're only thinking about the future of the stocks. Now, let's read you a quote from, this is from eBay. We believe this transaction, this is referring to selling stuff, is a great outcome and maximizes long-term value for our eBay shareholders. There's not a single mention of us in any kind of these reports they ever do. They never mention the resellers, the businesses themselves, basically, on there. It's all addressed to the shareholders, the people who invest the money and who get all the money back when they do these stock buybacks. eBay stock's going to soar this year because they bought back their stock, $4.5 billion of stock. So yeah, it's going to look good on paper, but I, I'll be hesitant to see what happens at the end of the year. Now, if the GMV, the gross merchandise volume, goes down again, all they're doing is lining their pockets. It's going to be the same route as Toys R Us. Back when these talks last year were coming around, people were asking me, do I think eBay is going to be sold? And I always said, no, there's no chance. My my prognosis on that now are probably way higher than any time in my, my, my history of being with eBay that they could be sold at this point in a couple of years. Again, I'm not hoping that. No, I love the aspect of being able to sell on eBay. eBay started me in this, this industry. I'm a reseller first and foremost. This is where we make all of our money. We pay our bills. We feed our, our kids. So I have an invested interest. I am passionate about what I do, and I take this more seriously than you could imagine. All of my time is invested into doing this business. So I've got a lot to lose if it doesn't go right. So I pray that this guy switches things around but my prognosis from his history just from what i've looked up everything i look up just doesn't look so good in my book it wouldn't be somebody i would hire for even as an assistant manager's position so i'll be optimistic i'll give it a chance if they go the wrong way with the affiliate links it already lets me know they've got a chance right now what usually happens if one site kills something the next site does it as well 
just like free shipping, eBay trying to push that. Etsy got in the game. eBay's in the game. Amazon's in the game. Walmart's in the game. Everybody's trying to push this free shipping, one-day shipping, all these other things to compete with each other. And as well, keep an eye out on the affiliate links. If they go ahead and cut the percentages they pay out on that as well, all they're going to do is follow suit with Amazon then. They're not going to think about the big picture. The big picture would have been investing $4.5 billion into the company. The same time they were doing all these buybacks, they cut the amount of advertising the company was doing. They've cut IT staff over and over again throughout this time frame as well, too. We all know that there's a lot of issues that still come about. They're forcing things upon the sellers. We have no feedback, no control. The only ones, again, who seem to be the prime concern of eBay is the shareholders. Again, it, it's a corporation. They can put their concern wherever they want. For my stake, I'm still going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be broadening my reach in the hopes of getting more and more of my inventory off of that specific platform. More and more of my sales and my revenue comes from other sources than eBay these days, again, because of issues like this. Only certain items are super viable on eBay. Most anything other than collectibles and vintage, I can do better selling somewhere else already. If they don't get a hold of this, you know, their prognosis doesn't look good. You know, you can't keep selling less items and having more people on a platform without having an issue where there's just so many people trying to sell and make money that no one's going to be making good money. I don't want eBay to be a race to the bottom. They start to bring in businesses and brick and mortar. It is, again, going to cause a ton of Vero's. Why would a business want to come on eBay and sell openly as a business when everybody else is selling their merchandise? It's not that way on Amazon for a reason. Amazon draws these people to sell on their platform because they block people from selling the merchandise if those companies don't want them to sell it. So again, there's a lot to think about here. Nothing to panic about at this moment. Give them a chance. We'll see where it goes. First signs I'm waiting for will be the affiliate link. If that goes wrong... Hopes are, are going to be dashed to start with, from my opinion. I personally don't hold a lot of faith in this sort of position, this sort of person being picked in there. I don't have a track record to go on at all. I have no way to show that he has brought more revenue to a company. In fact, I've got evidence from multiple sources, multiple places that, that he had worked prior to this that show the opposite. So that's what concerns me. Wall Street doesn't see it that way. I see it that way because I run my own business. I know what makes me successful. I know what made me successful when I worked for other people running their businesses. And I was promoted and promoted. So I've also taken all the business classes, the accounting classes, the whole works as well, to help better myself as well. I know how this works. This doesn't look good in my book. If they hired somebody with a strong IT background that understands how the code actually works and has started on the bottom line of this, been a reseller or been in the industry trying to start a business, that would give me so much better uh, feeling. You know, we need an innovator, somebody who is way outside the box to get this going. You don't need somebody who is coming from a company branch that lost $2 billion the year before and another branch before that that can't produce any information that they even made a profit. Profits are the bottom line. eBay is struggling with that. That's why they've been forced to sell off all the stuff to give their investors a big return on their investment. Now, how long is that going to last? If the markets stay the way they are, the, the, the pandemic stays the way it is, the markets are going to keep crashing, may not open up. I know it's going to bring an influx in sales online. It's also going to bring that competitors. It's also going to bring big box uh, business in here that can shut some people out of selling certain items by Vero's. If I'm selling on a platform and it's my product, I am not going to let anybody else sell it because it lessens the value of my product, plain and simple. Um, hopefully that gives you some thought on this. Again, it's not totally bad news. We don't know what's going to happen. It's all up in the air. But history repeats itself over and over and over again. Third party is not going to be the way to go to help the small business sellers on here. You know, I know eBay's reaching out and, and stating they're going to invest this and going to do that. They have to. Their sales are hurting in some areas as well. Higher-end items are not selling very well. Cars and things like that, the stuff that eBay makes the most amount of percentage of profit, are what's hurting. Now, stuff that we sell and stuff are selling like mad and great, yeah, but they don't make a fortune off of those. The higher-end stuff is what's not selling, which drives the revenue. So take it in consideration where that revenue is coming from. 
you know, we'll have to look at their numbers at the end of the year. But if we look at last year's and the year before that and the year before that and the year before that, eBay has been on a steady decline in sales overall. Their competition is clobbering them. You know, them hiring a major competitor is, is a little bit scary because if they're trying to go after that model, that's not a good model in my book. And again, you can't sell off your your revenue sources and continue to do the business without investing into it. So, But that's what I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit that bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. are tired of playing games. You are finished, Questar. They want the Dino Riders' time key. Your brother eats flies, Krulo. The greatest battle in the history of the universe is about to begin. Tyrannosaurus Rex and Diplodocus with motorized walking action and Monoclonius, each with figures in battle gear. Each sold separately, batteries not included.